Math and on with Jerome. Hey gang, what's up? As you can see, the lovelies and I are hunkered down, trying to steer clear of the nasty virus. <laughs> While our communities and the world deal with this crisis, it's important for us all to spend a little time each day taking solace in the things that bring us comfort. So I, like so many proud Americans, am turning to... Math. Those who know me are well aware that I'm endlessly enamored by the sinusoid. Oh, that lovely curvaceous sine wave. Anyway, I was thinking of how just one period of a sine wave does a pretty good job of modeling toilet paper sales at the present. Check it out. Toilet paper sales as a function of time. Right now, we're about here. It's madness out there. But stay calm and give it a little time. As humanity starts to conquer the virus, we will eventually reach a point when we realize that we are good. Each of us will be set with toilet paper for like a year. Toilet paper sales will plummet and we'll need to demonstrate our compassion for the toilet paper industry because they will be going from fat city to lean, lean times in a relatively short amount of time. Speaking of toilet paper, next time you're standing in a long supermarket line taking a gander at the mountain of TP rolls in the cart before you, or bemoaning the dearth of sanitary tissue, take the opportunity to practice some toilet paper math. Oh, you don't know what that is? Let me explain. Recently, I was working on this really hard arithmetic problem, and I thought of doing the traditional adding and subtracting algorithms that you were taught in school. but who has time for all that? So, enter toilet paper math. In this grand era of double rolls, mega rolls, and super mega rolls, we've been gifted with some wonderful time-saving mathematical techniques. Notice that 12 now equals 54, and 30 equals 68, and so on. Incredible! Let's put this to use. Okay, back to our problem. Um, let's see, 82 is equal to 18, 68 is equal to 30, 72 is equal to 12, and 54 is also equal to 12. So, we see that the 12s subtract each other out, or cancel each other out, as the young people like to say. And we're left with 18 minus 30. But 18 minus 30, that doesn't make any sense. If I had 18 cookies, I couldn't give away 30 cookies to you. It doesn't make sense. So what we do in situations like that is we just, we just swap the digits there. It's no big deal. So 18 becomes 81, and 81 minus 30, that is 51. Awesome. All right, now 51, that is equal to 54 minus 3. And once again, consulting the power of toilet paper math, 54 is equal to 12. 12 minus 3, let's see, that is equal to, um, carry the, seven, that is equal to 9. 9, and 9 is a perfect square, that is 3 squared. But look, in this egalitarian society we are striving for, no number should be higher than any other number. So if you want to leave it as 3 squared, you can. But also feel free to just take that 2 up there and, and bring it down on the same level as the 3. There we go. And that is our final answer, 32. All right, and just in case you, you, you question the, the veracity of this technique, let me go ahead and bring up a calculator and, and let's check our answer. 82 minus 68 plus 72 minus 54. There you go. You see that our, our work was correct? Works every time like a charm. So, next time you're listening to statistics and prognostications about the COVID-19 virus or engaging in financial transactions with price gougers, I hope you now feel empowered to break out the wonderful utility of toilet paper math. Bye, gang. Math and on with Jerome.